Today, we are going to learn how we can create something like this. Starting up with an After Effects, we are quickly going to import an image. Double click on the project panel and we are going to import an image of chips. It's a transparent image so that we can play around with the background. Let's create a new composition and give it a name and select the size you want. Drag the image to your timeline and let's scale it to around 200. Now let's pre-compose the layer and give it a name, Chips. Next, we are going to create a solid layer. And we are going to draw an area where we want to break the chip. Hide the solid layer and with the mask tool I am going to draw the area. Now, let's search for an effect called Shatter and apply it on a chips layer. Select View Type to Rendered and under Shape section, select Pattern as Glass. Now if you play it, it will entirely break into pieces. Now what we are going to do is, under the gradient layer we are going to select our solid layer. Before that, let's rename it to Mask. And under Source, select Mask. If we play it nothing happens but when you change the threshold to 50, this is going to break exactly from the area we wanted. Now, let's go under the physics section and change gravity to 0. We will change random speed to 0.1, randomness to 0.5 and viscosity to 0.5. Now, let's preview it. Increase the repetition to 30 to make the pieces smaller. I think let's tweak the viscosity to 0.4. Now let's preview it. Now if we zoom in, you will see the thickness of the broken pieces are quite big. To change the thickness, we are going to change the depth to 0.05. Maybe 0.02. Let's extend the comp a bit and in the second second let's animate the radius. First keep it to 0. And drag the timeline to a few frames further and change the radius to 0.4. Now this is going to break from second second. Now, let's animate the scale. In the 7th frame, we are going to keep the scale around 100. And in the 1st frame we are going to animate the scale from 0. And in the last frame let's keep it to 120. Now if we preview it, it will look something like this. You know what? Let's keep the composition till the 4th second. And on the 4th second let's animate the scale to 110. Now it will look something like this. Let's change the anchor point to the middle of the chips and I am going to place the chips to the center. Now, let's turn on the motion blur and duplicate the chips layer and increase the repetition to 50. You know what? Let's change it to 100. And I am going to change the radius to 0.2. Now if you preview it, you will see more various pieces breaking from the chip. Now, if you want to change the break area, simply move the mask to the area you want to break. Isn't it amazing? We are going to quickly undo it and keep the mask where we were before. We are almost done with the animation. Now let's make it more impactful. Now let's go under the chip layer and make a duplicate of it and we are going to break it into two pieces by masking each of them. Now, we have to turn both of the layers to 3D and animation rotation into the Y axis. Now, let's go back and see how it's looking. Let's pre-compose the whole animation and rename it. Now, I am adding one solid to make a background. Let's add gradient ramp. 
and change ramp shape to radial ramp and all the color you want to add. We are going to tweak some settings to make the background as interesting as possible. Now, what we are going to do is back two cuts just before the chip is breaking. Now we are going to add a wiggle expression under position to make the chip blast more impactful. We are going to copy the same expression and paste it on the top layer as well and change the settings. Change the wiggle parameters as long as you are satisfied with output. And lastly I am going to scale and rotate the entire chip breaking section to make it look more dynamic. Now next thing, I am going to import one stock video of a smock blast and put it above the area where the chip is breaking into pieces. Let's change the blending mode to screen and match it with the timeline. We are going to rescale it and add some tint to match it with visuals. Again we are going to resize it and time it exactly when it breaks. Lastly, I have added radial blur to the smoke layer to make it look more realistic. That's set guys, so this is how you can make an interesting effect like this and impress your clients. For more tutorials like this, subscribe to Mad Over Motion.